I was Sandy Usher, boy Rico from Street Scores, and I'm coming with another mock draft, man. I'm super excited because this one is built around Sam Howell being the QB1. If by the time we get to the draft, that will be after free agency, we'll know by then if we tried to swing, if we missed on some veteran quarterbacks or trading for some guys. And after that, we'll know if we've addressed offensive line, all of that type of stuff. So we'll have a really good grasp of who our QB1 should be entering the 2023 season by the time we get to the draft. And so for this mock draft, if they've decided by April, late April, that Sam Howell is the quarterback for the 2023 season and potentially our franchise quarterback, I wanted to make sure I had a mock draft built around giving him the best chance to succeed possible. That means building the O-line. And that doesn't mean neglecting defense, but that's focusing on offense to make sure Sam Howell has everything at his disposal that he needs. Some protection, some weapons, and all of that. But again, that does not mean that we're going to neglect linebacker and corner because I still feel like those are big needs as well. So this is like a good all-around mock draft to where we're prioritizing Sam Howell, but it's not like we're just going offense all seven rounds in some just imaginary draft that doesn't make sense. But if they really want to do everything that they can to give Sam Howell the best chance to succeed, this is the type of draft they will have and of course already did a video breaking this down but for reasons i explained in deeper detail in my video a few videos back where i'm explaining how the commanders got all of their draft picks i just want to go ahead and remind y'all what our draft picks are right now we have round one round 247th overall round 397th overall round 417th overall round 5 150th round 6 192nd round 6 214th and round 7 234th those are our draft picks eight draft picks in seven rounds two of them in the sixth we have one in each one remember we got some compensatory picks as well those are included in that list again i have a whole video breaking down how we got those picks why we'll get those picks all of that type of stuff what happened to our other third round pick that we gave to the colts for carson wentz all of that type of stuff but today we're focusing on the mock draft again this is based around hey man somehow you're the guy you know you're the guy we've told you you're the guy and we're gonna do everything in our power to make sure that you have a successful 2023 and that's including making sure that you improve the defense to get them the ball back sooner and after a mock draft like this if you don't look good in 2023 i don't know what to tell you and i feel like at the very least like i've already said in several videos if you have a draft like this where you do everything you can to build around sam howell as if he's your franchise quarterback if he doesn't work out now you potentially have a good draft pick to go get your franchise quarterback like a caleb williams quinn ewers or a drake may and then you just simply place them in this offense and defense that's built around a franchise quarterback and they should be able to succeed and have instant success even now as a rookie but we're getting ahead of ourselves right now this is focused on sam howell for 2023 but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and a peanated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday for the call in show even though the commander season is over does not mean the street score season is over so i have my sunday call in show where y'all call in you voice your opinions you ask your questions we talk sam howell we talk mock drafts we talk free agency we talk draft stuff period film sessions everything and we watch the playoff games together so we even talk about that as well make sure you pull up every sunday for that and also stay tuned for further mock drafts because i have a lot of different ideas i have a defensive win i have an offensive win i have a trade up i have a trade back i have all kinds of stuff my next mock draft will probably be the one where i focus on how to make the commanders the best defense in the nfl in 2023 so stay tuned for all of those mock drafts and all of the content that's coming up and let's get it All right, so with this mock draft, round one, I've us taking offensive tackle Broderick Jones from Georgia. Now, before we dive into his traits, highs, lows, good, bad, positives, negatives, strengths, weaknesses, all of that, because we're going to do that for all of these guys. But I also want to make sure for all of these guys, I explain the pick and what's exactly going on with the team. So assuming that through free agency, we don't go crazy on getting offensive line talent, like trying to get Orlando Brown at left tackle and maybe some other names at offensive line, whatever center guard whatever you want to do say we just don't go crazy say if we just try to find some more cheap options like andrew norwell and trey turner that we're not sure if they're even ready to start you go broderick jones in the first round and i would say you go get broderick jones 
who has a very high ceiling to be a starting left tackle in the NFL, Pro Bowl caliber guy. It's all in him. You just got to work with him. A little raw, few things to work on. But I just feel like for me, best case scenario, you move Samuel Cosme from right tackle to right guard. I feel like that would be his best natural position. All of that short arm stuff and getting beat by Michael Parsons and things like that with quickness. If you put him in a phone booth in a limited space, I think he could dominate a guard and literally be like another Brandon Sheriff, in my opinion. I feel like the bad reps he had at guard this past season were because first of all he was hurt second of all there were literally games where in the game one game he would play sometimes a right guard sometimes a right tackle back and forth like just really weird stuff and he was never able to get fully comfortable i believe in samuel cosme a guard definitely believe in him at guard more than right tackle then charles leno who i feel like gets a little bit more hate than he deserves at left tackle move him to right tackle that should be a little bit of an easier job and then maybe west swice is your center or whatever we're gonna address center later on in the draft but chase roulier you go into this season this is like hey this is your last year man you you can't keep getting hurt for the majority of every season we need you to stay healthy so this is your last year to prove that you can stay healthy if not we're gonna address center later on in this mock draft they can be ready to start if and potentially when chase roulier ends up getting hurt i really hope he doesn't though because he's a top five center when he's healthy but when is he healthy you're not a top five center when you're injured and not available for the team and then left guard, I think I saw enough from Chris Paul against the Cowboys to not necessarily assume that he's going to be our starting left guard come the 2023 regular season. But I think at the very least, he's earned an honest chance to compete for it. And I think he will end up winning it because he looked really good against the Cowboys at left guard. He looked so natural. just looked like just like Sam Howell. It was like, why wasn't he starting this whole time? Sam Howell should have been starting since Carson Wentz got hurt in the Bears game going into the Packers game. And it looked like Chris Paul may have should have been starting since the whole season. I mean, unless he just wasn't that good this whole time. But I just don't trust the way they evaluate guys because they sounded like they were surprised that Sam Howell was that good against the Cowboys. And so I feel like it was probably the same thing with Chris Paul where he looked good in practice, but they didn't feel like he would necessarily be able to do that in game. And then he went out there and did it in game. So keep that going, man. I think Chris Paul will probably end up being our starting left guard. Hopefully we bring back Wes Swicer as a backup interior offensive lineman, center, guard, whatever you want. And then hopefully we keep Cornelius Lucas as a backup tackle thing, even though he's not that good. But as a backup tackle and for very cheap, he's decent. Go and get your franchise starting Pro Bowl caliber left tackle in Broderick Jones from Georgia. And of course I have my Georgia shirt on, but I just honestly like Broderick Jones that much. This is no bias to Georgia. I can see the argument for why some people feel like Paris Johnson Jr. from Ohio State would be better and I can see why a lot of people like Peter Skoronsky from Northwestern because between him Broderick Jones and Paris Johnson Jr. he's the more polished guy maybe the guy that's ready to start day one a little bit more than those guys probably the higher floor guy you could say very high IQ all of that type of stuff I could definitely see an argument for that and I may mock him to us in one of my mock drafts because I don't want to keep doing the same players over and over again because then what's the fun in that but as of right now, if I had my wish, it would be us taking Broderick Jones in the first round if we're going offensive lineman. Of course, I've already done a mock draft where I have us taking Joey Porter in the first round because I really love him at corner. Also, I like Christian Gonzalez a lot, and I love the potential of Keely Ringo, who has the highest ceiling in the draft, of course, out of all corners. But... Christian Gonzalez and Joey Porter come with a way higher floor and you can depend on them better so even though I am a Georgia Bulldog fan I'm not biased I prefer to get Christian Gonzalez or Joey Porter over Keely Ringo in my opinion just because I'm worried about Keely Ringo's rawness his lack of technique his inconsistencies his lack of focus and lack of discipline at times but Keely Ringo in his best day is the best corner in this draft easily the problem is how often you're going to get his best day even within the same game which drives he, is he going to give you that which drives is he not but back to my main point Broderick Jones if we don't go corner like Joey Porter or Christian Gonzalez, if we go tackle, Broderick Jones is my pick. I feel like him and Paris Johnson have similar issues, similar positives both high ceiling not necessarily low floor because there's a certain floor to those guys they're not just this super raw freak athlete prospects that could just end up failing i feel like even at the worst they'll be quality starters but i think at their very best they could be pro bowl level maybe even all pro starters at the tackle position i like them both a lot i just prefer Broderick jones a little bit more because i feel like he's a little bit more athletic a little bit stronger i like paris johnson's mentality a little bit more he has a little bit more of a mean streak where i feel like Broderick jones has all of the strength in the world 
world he just doesn't have that nasty mean streak that you would hope he would have we could somehow instill that into him he has the potential to be the best tackle in his class and again i mean the best way to really describe him is like kind of like a higher ceiling but lower floor andrew thomas i mean they're literally one inch difference in height and i think like literally two or three pounds difference in weight but again andrew thomas came out more polished out of georgia but Roger jones comes out with definitely a higher ceiling and more athletic and i will be elated first of all i just want to bring georgia bulldogs into the organization period with me being a georgia bulldogs fan and a commanders fan it does suck that we have so many alabama so many ohio state even a few oklahoma guys but no georgia guys and with as much as georgia men winning i just feel like it's only right to bring more of a winning mentality to your organization the same reason we were bringing in alabama guys why not do that with georgia guys they come in with a certain pedigree and a certain expectation of winning and i feel like that does carry over into the nfl but also i just feel like they're freakishly talented guys there's a reason georgia is winning all these games coaching has a lot to do with it but it's more so talent than anything else being stronger and faster than the opponent and Broderick jones is just one of those guys where no matter who's a defensive lineman matched up against them edge rusher whoever Broderick jones is not going to be outclassed as far as athleticism strength and speed and all of that it's going to take somebody that knows what they're doing like a nick bosa technician type of guy somebody like chase young with all of the athleticism in the world but doesn't have a pass rush plan or a counter or any type of stuff like that any technical refinement is going to struggle against a project jones because all of that athleticism that you were using in college and getting away with it with all of your raw ability that's not going to work against a guy like project jones who's just as athletic as you are and that's why i feel like there's a certain floor to him as well because even though he's a little raw at the very least he could just go out there and ball out just play ball just tell him to go out there in the field and block somebody he's gonna get it done most of the time but once we work on his technique especially like working on his hand placement not allowing guys to get up into his chest and keeping his pad level lower more consistently he could literally be a pro bowl all pro type of tackle i mean i feel like it's easier said than done but those are some coaching things that you can take and work on it you can't teach his athleticism but you can teach him all of those other things may take some time but i really like the potential of Broderick Jones and again I mean honestly if we would have instead of taking Broderick Jones and Paris Johnson Jr I would still be almost just as happy honestly I believe both of those guys are gonna end up being really good left tackles at the NFL level I'm cool with either one but I slightly prefer Broderick Jones for athleticism reasons but of course I also just want a bunch of Georgia Bulldogs on my commanders can I got dream and then round two 47th overall I have us taking tight end Darnell Washington from Georgia honestly I feel like we may have to trade up into the end of the first to get him because I think after the combine when people see his measurables and how strong he really is his real weight and things like that with him literally being a third tackle on the field that can catch passes i just don't see him making out of the first round and my main point with darnell washington is every team needs a darnell washington it doesn't matter even if you're the kansas city chiefs with travis kelsey having a third tackle on the field that can also catch passes is only going to help travis kelsey out doesn't matter how good your tight end group is darnell washington can help because he's going to be the best blocker on the team immediately day one i feel like and there's still some technical refinement that he can definitely improve on i mean i remember i think it was the tcu game the championship game where he like basically wrestled somebody down onto the ground of course it was a holding penalty you can't just grab somebody by the neck and shoulders and throw them down first of all an impressive use of his strength and athleticism to even be able to do that to somebody but there's some technical refinement there but by the way i mean he comes in again he's literally a third tackle on the field that can catch passes now of course the reason why he's not projected to go top 15 in the draft in the first round because all of the talent is there he just has a problem with separating he's not very fast again he's a third tackle on the field now he's not as slow as another tackle as a right tackle or a left tackle but he's also not as fast as you would hope out of a tight end but at the same time i mean he may be just as fast as john bates i mean with the way logan thomas looks so slow out there i how I highly doubt that he's slower than what Logan Thomas was this season so it's not like he's very slow but at the same time don't expect him to be out there running like Travis Kelsey and stuff like that and that's probably why it'll slide but at the same time which tight ends are there's like a handful of tight ends that you can literally count on one hand that actually get open on their own and even if that most of these tight ends out here are getting open because the offensive coordinator schemed them open plain and simple there's literally maybe three to five guys that actually can route run and get open on their own against a db or a linebacker truthfully i mean remember austin hooper i kept telling y'all when he was available as a free agent a couple of years ago don't believe the hype that man was being schemed open then he went to an offense 
an offensive coordinator that didn't know how to scheme them open and look what happened most of the titans in the nfl even the ones we consider really good are very dependent on the offensive coordinator getting them open and having weapons outside of the tight end group to allow them to get open you got to focus on terry you got to focus on jahan you got to focus on curtis antonio gibson brian robinson all of those guys and that's why somebody like a darnell washington will be open as many times as he wants to be and it doesn't matter how slow he is and then also another problem is that his hands are very inconsistent i mean he's dropped so many open passes with georgia man so frustrating the only reason i'm not super upset at him because i i mean just with how powerful and potent georgia's offense was this past season it just felt like even if he dropped a 30 yard first down pass that could have gone for a touchdown i just felt like eh, we didn't doubt we'll probably end up getting the first down anyway third and long whatever we'll end up probably scoring a touchdown in this drive anyway but if he were to do that for my commanders i'll probably be flipping a table because it just feels like hopefully there's a new era with sam howell and whoever this next offensive coordinator is going to be but it just seems like a drop pass from our receivers or anybody on this offense for the commanders the, for as long as i can remember that pretty much the drive is done you drop an open first down the drive is literally fine and now we'd get on my last nerve of darnell washington did that and again that may be why he actually ends up making it to the late first round early second either way i do whatever i got to do to trade up back into the first round to get him especially for that fifth year rookie contract i know you usually only do that for quarterbacks but i'm telling y'all darnell washington is different if y'all don't watch Georgia tape I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you as a diehard Georgia Bulldog fan our offense was not the same without him on the field we literally run to his side again I know I keep saying it he's literally a third tackle on the field this man is six foot seven 270 pounds and if he wanted to he could easily gain more muscle and add more weight if he really wanted to and literally become a tackle just to put it in perspective at 270 and again I feel like he could add more weight He's like 30 pounds heavier than Will Anderson at edge. Around the same weight as Miles Murphy, an edge rusher. Around the same weight as Tyree Wilson, another edge rusher. Probably going to end up being like less than 20 pounds lighter than Brian Brzee, an interior defensive lineman, a defensive tackle. I mean, Peter Skaroski, who we were talking about earlier, is only 290. If you really wanted to, honestly, give add a few more pounds on him. He can literally be a right tackle at the NFL level, but this guy can catch. He can't catch very consistently, but when you need him to in the biggest moments, I feel like he catches passes. And again, you run your offense through him. You have Broderick Jones on the left side, Charles Leno on the right, and then Darnell Washington to his right with Samuel Cosme at right guard. And then you run that way with Brian Robinson. How do we not gain at least three yards every play? Like, I just, I don't see how you don't. So that's my argument for Darnell Washington in the second round, 47th overall. Now, round three, 97th overall, I really like the cornerback Garrett Williams from Syracuse. Love him a lot great in zone coverage with press man ability good agility and change of direction ability basically just a smaller benjamin st juice is what i described very good in zone coverage can play press man and, and can excel at it for some reason syracuse just chose not to do that with them a lot but when you watch them on tape you can tell that if jack de rio wanted to just really run garrett williams as cornerback two, Benjamin St. Juice cornerback one, and press man occasionally, he really could, especially if our defensive line is getting to the quarterback that day and we want to become a little bit more aggressive, you could do that. Love Kendall Fuller. Loved what he did this season, but he's not a press man corner. He's really versatile in different ways, but as far as like being able to go from zone coverage to press man, we literally can't do that because right now Benjamin St. Juice is our only press man corner. I love Danny Johnson a lot as well, but he can't press man like that either. But if you draft a Garrett Williams in the third round, round if you're lucky for him to fall that far even though i actually do think it's quite likely i don't make these impossible mock drafts i try to at least get guys within a certain range i'm not gonna say we're gonna get cj stroud in the third round and things like that or even christian gonzalez in the third round you know what i'm saying but i do feel like there's a chance that garrett williams could slide that far but again danny johnson kendall fuller love them hope they're here next year and hope they're here beyond that as well but if you want to be able to be really versatile in your coverage schemes and you want to be able to switch it up from zone coverage to man coverage to the match coverage that we already do once we got rid of william jackson that was his biggest weakness he couldn't do match coverage he wasn't versatile enough all he wanted to do was press man and that was it which is something benjamin st juice can do but nobody else could do so it didn't make sense whereas garrett williams you want to do press man with benjamin st juice occasionally you can do that both of those guys can excel in that but at the same time garrett williams is also very good in zone coverage so a lot of the times when jack DeRio wants to run zone coverage which is most of the time you have kendall fuller gail williams danny johnson and benjamin st juice they can all excel at that and i just feel like he's so versatile again whatever you want to do and he's a willing tackler i feel like he's a home run hit in the third round if he makes it that far i really do i think that man is a different type of guy very aggressive 
is one of those alpha mentality guys always talking love that about him that's probably my favorite trait as you can see the guys that trash talk the most the guys that's the most arrogant y'all know me man i love those type of guys of course my boy george pickens out of georgia but marshawn lynch marcus peters chad johnson cam newton adam pacman jones that's who i want on my team those are the type of guys i want on my team you just need a head coach that can control them and make sure things don't get out of control and i feel like rivera is that type of guy if he's gonna end up being here long term keep bringing guys in like that for me please i feel like his biggest weaknesses and why he'll make it to the third round is first of all he doesn't have a lot of long speed which is something benjamin st Jude struggles with as well his ball skills as far as with his back to the ball he struggles with getting his head turned around quite a bit that's a big problem at the nfl level but i feel like that's easily coachable we can work that out of him and then he's also recovering from an october 2022 acl injury which is another reason why i think he'll slide and i'm not even sure if he's going to be able to even perform at the combine or even if he does he may not do as well as people expected he was he only played seven games this past season but in those seven games literally looked like a slightly smaller benjamin st juice and i will take that any day of the week i mean again his strengths and weaknesses outside of the lack of ball skills because benjamin st juice had great ball skills this past season he was the reason a couple of other people was getting interceptions but the zone coverage skills the press man ability change of direction ability agility as the positives but also lacks long speed literally benjamin st juice just not as six foot three more like a six foot one type of guy almost 200 pounds but one thing that he does have that benjamin st juice may not necessarily have is that he may be a slightly better run defender but that's not saying much because benjamin st juice is quite terrible against the run but i'll take it in the third round any day of the week please sign me up for garrett williams then round four 117th overall i know i've already taken this guy in a previous mock draft but that's just how high i am on this guy senator joe tipman out of wisconsin bro literally just the high ceiling the samuel cosme of centers in this draft remember samuel cosme was like one of the most athletic freaks to ever come out of the draft period as an offensive lineman since the super bowl era joe tipman's really close to that he may not be quite the athletic ras super crazy score as a samuel cosme but he's close to it he's a guy that you just bring him in i mean wisconsin and offensive linemen go hand in hand i mean you get an offensive lineman from wisconsin it's quite likely that they'll end up at the very least being a decent player for you so i just feel like that pedigree alone wisconsin produces offensive linemen like nobody else and there's other few schools in there but they're definitely in the contention for offensive line you and then you just take that that wisconsin pedigree the freak athleticism the crazy high ceiling and you just work on his lack of leverage it's little not as flexible as you would hope and definitely got to improve on his mechanics but his positional flexibility i mean the fact that he can play pretty much anywhere on the offensive line if you really wanted him to but i prefer him at center but if you need him to play some guard he could if there were an injury and we just had to mix up the offensive line for whatever reason but i mean at six foot six 317 pounds a guy like that that's that big shouldn't be able to move like that i think he's gonna kill the combine potentially and i'm really excited about seeing what his res score ends up being and like i already said earlier you give chase Roulet this last season to prove himself and to see if he can be healthy and if he can't if he ends up getting hurt sometime mid-season i feel like by then joe tipman will be ready to be a really good center for us i feel like he's raw but he's not that raw to where you're kind of putting them in a the refrigerator and red shirting them for like a year or two or something like that i feel like you let chase really a start if something happens to him you have Tyler Larson if Joe Tipman isn't ready yet you still have Tyler Larson on the roster and he can step in just in case and even just in case to just in case you have Wes Schweitzer but I feel like hopefully if Chase Roulier ends up getting hurt next season you have a great contingency plan in Joe Tipman I'm telling you man he has the athleticism and potential to be a Pro Bowl center but there's a lot of rawness there of course but man I'm telling you man don't sleep on my boy I'm surprised he was only a three-star coming out of high school because his athletic alone you would think he would have been a four-star player i mean the power the athleticism the mobility strong base strong arms strong hands he has lateral agility to be able to pass protect very well that's where the athleticism comes from and the nice feet the good footwork and all of that type of stuff and then he's smart as well i mean as far as handling stunts and blitzes and stuff like that he's really good for that and remember i believe one of the taylor heineke strip sacks for a fumble for a touchdown i think it was the one against the giants from Kayvon thibodeau i think that was a miscommunication from the center during that game he was supposed to be the one to get the offensive line together and make sure you id the potential 
potential blitzes and stuff like that and him not doing that resulted in that strip sack fumble that pretty much lost us that Giants game inevitably and Joe Tipman is one of those guys that's already shown that he can handle responsibilities like that so if he makes it to round four again I feel like after the combine he may not be able to but when I look around mock drafts and big boards a lot of people feel like he could actually make it to our 117th overall pick potentially but we'll see we'll see how that goes we may have to take him way sooner than that at the very least maybe the third round but I just couldn't help but throw him in the mix again because I'm a big fan of Joe Tipman if you go watch him man you'll see and then round five 150th overall I have us taking linebacker Dayon Henley from Washington State best way to describe him is very extremely high ceiling linebacker the problem is he spent three years as a wide receiver and then switched to linebacker as a senior just this past 2022 season so he had great flashes but he's still very raw in a lot of ways and I feel like this is the guy where you may not want to play him much his first and second year potentially maybe by the second year he'll be ready hopefully but I feel like this is the type of guy with as raw as he is he may not be really ready to get real at least starting level snaps until like his third year but at the very least keep him in the rotation because he's an athletic freak man crazy high ceiling when if you get the most out of him you get a potential pro bowl linebacker i mean at six foot two 232 pounds to me he could literally be darius leonard of the colts in my opinion that's i that's my honest opinion in flashes he literally looks like that the problem again is that he's only played linebacker for one year in his life and you could kind you could tell easily like you see it i mean his first step explosiveness is crazy he can cover at times whenever he knows what he's doing it's not his body it's his brain when he knows what he's doing and he's confident he looks great in coverage he makes plays out in space great open field tackler i think he can end up being really good against the run with as powerful and as strong as he is and explosive as he is too as well i'm telling y'all man y'all get day on henley man since i've been watching him i'm really excited about him man i'm really excited about day on henley then round six, 192nd overall, I have us taking wide receiver Elijah Higgins from Stanford, six foot three, high ceiling wide receiver that some people I've heard compare him to potentially being an AJ Brown type of guy. Now, when I watched the tape, I didn't necessarily see all that. I could kind of see where people are coming from because he is a very high ceiling type of guy, very strong. Some people are saying like he's like the Debo Samuel, AJ Brown type of mold type of thing. Also heard Anquan Bolden or you Juju Smith-Schuster type of thing. Just that kind of mold of receiver. Big, strong, contested catch guy. Not the tallest guy. I mean, he's not as tall as Cam Sims, but he's still six foot six. He's taller than Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaurin, and Jahan Dotson, of course. And I mean, obviously, with some people thinking that he could potentially be an A.J. Brown, the only problem is that he's very raw. He played a lot in the slot in college. Like, I mean, they barely used him outside, and I just don't really see him playing much slot at the NFL level. So he's going to have some rawness. He needs to develop a better route tree, all of that type of stuff. And on tape, he doesn't look like a big vertical threat. Even though he is very athletic, he just doesn't necessarily take the lid off of the defense. But man, please take this guy if you can. If he's available later in the draft, you got to at least try, man. I know we already have a really good receiving core. But if you just add an A.J. Brown to this again, that's very wishful thinking to just assume that he's going to become A.J. Brown. Not very likely that he will. Because if, if it was very likely, he would go in the first round, of course but I mean his combination of size and speed the way he runs after the catch with speed and with all of that strength he just breaks tackles like it's nothing and then he's either too fast for linebackers or too big for corners it's really just unfair but you just got to work on his route tree you got to find a defined role for him and if you do man this guy has loads of potential I'm definitely willing to take a risk on this guy later in the draft especially like round six and then with our second sixth round pick 214th overall I have a second guard McClendon Curtis from Chattanooga another very high ceiling guys you can see a, a lot of these last picks are just high ceiling guys you take them hopefully they work out if they don't when in doubt it was a late round pick anyway but these guys all have pro bowl potential but they're very raw and in McClendon Curtis's case not only is he very raw but he played against low competition I mean he played for Chattanooga so low competition hasn't faced the guys that he's gonna face in the NFL like I mean granted guys that even play for Georgia and Alabama they're going against future NFL players but it's still college and you still worry about how they're going to transition to the NFL when they get up there this guy didn't even play against a lot of these guys at the NFL at the very least Broderick Jones and Paris Johnson they're going to be rookies of course but at least they've blocked against the guys they're going to be going against the NFL at least some of the times at some point in college like Broderick Jones had the block against at the very 
very least do drills against like Jalen Carter and Devontae Wyatt and Trevon Walker and Jordan Davis and stuff like that. Even if it was just one-on-one -on -one drills, Broderick Jones has that experience. Of course, going to the NFL as a rookie, there's going to be a learning curve. You're not just going to be ready for that day one. I think they'll be ready year one. But again, Chattanooga has never played against probably anybody that's going to the NFL at the very least defensive line wise. So that's going to be a big learning curve. And that's why you could potentially get him in the sixth round but man his ceiling is insane man so athletic this man is six foot seven 340 pounds i believe he would be our heaviest offensive lineman the day he walks in even heavier than cornelius lucas who's six foot eight at 330 i mean his physical tools his power his his explosiveness off the line and i mean he even has some positional flex as well and you know ron rivera loves his positional flex he's played both guard positions and tackle so this guy you develop him into whatever you want him to be i think you develop him as a potential interior offensive lineman like a guard but if you were really in a pinch and you developed him he's not as raw as he was coming out of chattanooga if you need him to rotate in at tackle because of an injury i think he has the potential to do that he's not just purely a guard only he's tall enough long enough and athletic enough to be on the outside as a tackle and he's also strong enough and angry enough to play guard if you need him to but of course again there's a lot of rawness to his game man first of all him trying to become a second level blocker is almost comedy it's just not there yet feet pretty slow as far as that goes and then you know with him not having great leverage and great technique sometimes he leans a little too much and struggles in pass protection a little bit but very raw and one of those balls of clay that if you get the most out of him you got a huge steal in the sixth round for sure i mean chris paul we got a steal in him in the seventh i feel like we can potentially do it again and then round seven i have us taking another tackle as you can see with the last two picks i said you might as well just get some more offensive linemen because all the injuries that we deal with make you get some positional flex guys some high ceiling guys that you can develop into something special potentially just go ahead with the last couple of picks you just have picks to spare at this point bring in more offensive line because who knows what's going on honestly but i have us taking offensive tackle kadeem telford from uab very talented player should have been in the sec easily had the talent and athleticism to play in the sec honestly but he ended up in legal trouble so he ended up down at uab even though he was being recruited to the sec by sec teams but a lot of teams were like nah i'm good on that after that legal trouble so of course that's somewhat of a red flag there but he has ridiculous potential but is at the same time very raw i mean very physically gifted man I mean, some people thought him coming out of high school that he could be one of the better tackles in college football. He has that level of potential there. And so, I mean, it's really not much else to explain. It's just he's raw. And with the legal trouble that caused him to have to transfer down to UAB outside of the SEC, those are red flags there. But man, if you can keep him straight mentally and develop that rawness and turn it into a refined tackle, I mean, it could end up potentially being him as right tackle, Broderick Jones at left tackle. And then you just move Samuel Cosme to right guard. And we're set to go. Joe Tipman at center and Chris Paul at left guard. And if all of those guys reach their potential, we have a top five offensive line in the NFL easily. I believe in Kadeem Telfort that much. The only problem is, whoo wee, man. He's an interesting case of legal problems and raw, and which is why I feel like he could honestly make it to the seventh round. But talent, wise alone, and athleticism, especially if he goes crazy in the combine like I think he may be able to, it's quite likely that he doesn't make it to the seventh round because the ceiling is crazy. I mean, I know I had us taking a lot of high ceiling guys but he may be one of the guys with the highest ceiling out of this whole draft class but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know about everything discussed in this video please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything of course let me know how you feel about this mock draft of course put your mock drafts in the chat as well i'm always checking those out really appreciate that for real i love seeing the players y'all bring up because i still haven't watched all of the tape i need to watch so sometimes y'all are putting me on the players and again a lot of the times when i'm doing these mock drafts i'm trying to put y'all on the players especially when we start to get to the later rounds with these high ceiling hot low floor athletic guys that i really love and that i really get attached to but definitely let me know how you feel about my mock draft and all of the players i had us taking do you feel like this is a good mock draft for sam how do i feel like do you feel like i went too many offensive players do you feel like i didn't go enough defense and all that type of stuff and of course man i appreciate all the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my probo sponsors who name you see scrolling on the screen right now please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything and i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out